Thanksgiving to all of you. Dig in in Big D because it's Denver and Dallas coming up on CBS. Yes, family, football, feasting all go together to make this truly the great American holiday. And hello, friends, Jim Nance, along with Bill Sims. Wonderful to be with you and to share part of the holiday experience with you and with you, my friend. Happy holiday to you and yours. Well, same to you, Jim. Thanksgiving is about giving thanks, spending time with your family and friends, and hopefully we're going to see some good football here. It should be really a dandy down here in Dallas. And Jake Plummer, we've been talking about it all week. They talked about it on the NFL today. He's been almost mistake-free this year. Well, there's a couple reasons why Jake Plummer has been so good this year, and he's cut down the mistakes. Mike Shanahan told us last night, this is a competitive guy. He never likes to give up on any play. And when you play quarterback like that in the NFL, it's going to lead to a lot of interceptions and fumbles when nothing is there. And this year, he's done a tremendous job of the play's not there. Don't take a chance. That's why his turnovers are down. All right, Jake Plummer in the backfield has had not only Mike Anderson, but Tatum Bell. Bell is a late scratch with a bruised sternum. We'll see Ron Dane. They know how to run the football, and Dane will see some action today. Well, he will, and Denver fans don't get nervous because Ron Dane has been waiting for his chance, and this Cowboy defense, if you're Denver, you're going to run the football day. It's going to be about really tough yards, and these two running backs can get the tough yards. Phil for the Cowboys, Drew Bledsoe having a sensational season down here, although it seems Seems like no one wants to give him the credit he deserves. He goes back a long way with Bill Parcells, and those two together know how to get it done. Well, you always hear about Drew Bledsoe, what he can't do. Well, there's a lot of things that he does very well. He's played with three different teams. He's thrown for over 40,000 yards. Average quarterbacks do not do that. So he's big, he's tough, he can throw the football down the field, and Bill Parcells, no question, says, he is the leader of my offense. All right, for the Cowboys defense, their leader there is Roy Williams, and he made really the play of the season for Dallas a couple of Mondays ago in Philadelphia in the late going. Well, what this could do, this could change their whole season around, getting this interception. And Roy Williams will be a big part again today. He'll be near the line of scrimmage, try to stop the Denver running backs, and also he's got to look for Jake Plummer when he runs out of the pocket for those bootlegs. And now UPS delivers today's reliable game points. And Phil, let's match them up. You see so many similarities with these two. There really are. You talk about the health of the, both of these football teams. 11th game, they're both healthy, so that's good. Their records, they're good. They're leading their divisions. Thanksgiving Day, they love playing on the big stage. And whoever wins this game today will have momentum carrying them for the rest of the season. For your reliable game picks delivered by UPS, log on to CBSSportsLine.com. Al Wilson's ready, and we are too. Today's game brought... Bill Parcells, this was a short week of practice. Back in his 2003, his first year in Dallas, somebody suggested he takes it easy on his players Thanksgiving week. He did. They got crushed by Miami, and well, that was the end of that. So, sure enough, Dallas was in pounds on Tuesday while Denver was in shells all week. And when Jake Plummer got wind of that, he had a little smirk on his face. He said, good, I hope they beat each other up, so they're tired for us. All right, Bonnie, and Mike Shanahan was in here just four years ago on Thanksgiving Day with his Broncos and defeated Dallas in that one, 26-24. Yes, Bill Parcells that first year listened to all the people he said who had experience with this game on this day, and it was a disaster, so... So now I do it my way. That's and right. Be who you are. Billy Cundiff to kick to Rock Alexander. And the game is underway from the six. Alexander clipped down at the 28 by Roy Williams. Now Jake Plummer has to go all the way back to game three since his last pass interception. An offensive line very underrated around this league. Just look at the rushing totals. Lepsis on the left side. And the Wiley veteran Rod Smith still over the age of 35 catching a lot of passes and leading the team in receiving. And swinging it out out of the backfield to get it started. And that's Anderson gaining three yards against this Cowboys defense. And the Cowboys have been particularly tough here at home. They've got two rookies making big contributions, including Marcus Spears, first rounder out of LSU, along with 
Demarcus Ware, first rounder out of Troy State, one of the linebackers, and there's their leader, Roy Williams, Pro Bowler, each of the last two years. It's second down and seven. And from it, firing again too high for Rod Smith. This Dallas defense has not given up more than 14 points in any one of the games here at Texas Stadium this year. How do you see it on this side of the ball with Denver? Well, Denver, they want to grind it out. Mike Shanahan says, Beaver, maybe we got a chance to get to him. Charlie Adams in as an extra receiver on third and seven. Plummer tries the left side and uh, maybe a little miscommunication. Terrence Newman of the Cowboys the closest to it. Well, one thing that Mike Shanahan says about his offense, it does so many sharp offensively just days ago against the Jets when they held the football for 43 minutes. Three and out with their first possession today. Salabrin with the big leg. Doesn't need altitude, but let it soar. And this is Peerless Price getting by Chuck Warren, finding the right side and skipping out at the 23. Well, Drew Bledsoe, two to one ratio, touchdowns to picks. First selection in the draft back in 93. First player chosen by Bill Parcells and in his initial season when he was the New England coach. They teamed up together to go to a Super Bowl. On the line, Rivera, an offseason acquisition. Free agent out of Green Bay, and he's been big. And there's Julius Jones with a high ankle sprain, still recovering, but he's been playing now for the last couple of weeks. Still recovering, huh? What did uh, Coach Parcells tell you about that? He's fine. That's right. He's 100 percent. <laughs> I don't want any built-in excuses. You know all about that talk. He won't stand for any discussion about injuries or 100 percent or 90 percent. Bledsoe in the pocket, and that one right off the hands and then the knee of Terry Glenn. Ball may have been deflected, threw it off course. Now the Broncos defense coming off the first shutout for the Bronco organization since 1997. And Price on that defensive front that has been bolstered so much by an influx of players from Cleveland. Al Wilson in the middle saying, no question, this is the best Denver team he's been a part of. And Champ Bailey hampered early in the season with a hammy close to really being all the way back now. Peerless Price comes in for the Cowboys on second and 10. That's over to Keyshawn incomplete. Got thumped by Bailey and knocked it loose. And what about when the Cowboys have the football? Well, the Cowboys worried about this Denver blitz. They really crowd the line of scrimmage. So Bill Parcells, let's get up there, get up there early and give Drew Bledsoe a chance to change the play if he has to. Denver's defense, Mike Shanahan said, hey, the Cowboys just execute on third down as good as any offense he has seen in the National Football League. And especially right here, when Al. it's third and long, not like a lot of teams, they'll go down the field and try to pick it up. They brought in Marion Barber on third down into the Cowboy backfield. And Jason Witten will need to make a move to get the first, and he'll be a couple of yards shy. So the Denver defense for the 11th straight game. Aaron Williams. And McGuire also with the lead foot. Back to the 17, it's Williams, rookie, who is explosive. And he is ridden down from behind out at the 27. Teams that love to dominate with the running game. Jim, both teams trying to catch the other team, other defense, off guard. Now they'll settle into their game plans. And here we go. Make the rush to Anderson. And Plummer going across the field, looking for Lalee. And over the head of Lalee. Aaron Glenn, though, was down there with him, step for step. Well, Mike Shanahan, he went back a long ways to find this one. This is made famous by John Elway. Play action fake, quarterback rolls to his right. He stops and throws all the way across the field. It works so well for him many times in the old days of Denver. But when you go against Aaron Glenn, he's the corner in this whole game for both teams that scares me the most. He's not afraid to take a chance and get an interception. Good job by the defense staying at home. Second and ten, and finally we see a running play, and there's nothing there but a yard, that's all. Roy Williams comes up. Well, the Broncos come in on top of the AFC West with 
I would say is the strongest division in pro football. You got San Diego, Kansas City lined up behind him at six and four, and the Raiders at four and six. Meanwhile, the Cowboys and the NFC, now you look at this, a shared lead with the Giants, seven and three, a popular standing right now in the NFC with Chicago, Carolina, Tampa. Third down and nine. Clear out the backfield. Plumber's pass. Well, that one was in the air for a while. Tipped by Greg Ellis. Something the Cowboys could not do last year. Look at this. Everybody just has a man, and they keep a safety in the middle. They are the coverage by the defensive backs. Their depth of defensive backs allows them to do it this year, where last year they could not do that. So again, unable to pick up a first down, and Peerless Price waits for Sauerbrunn's second kick. This one not caught by Sauerbrunn with the full effect at NFL.com or NFL on AOL. Now the Cowboys with their second possession, and a good place to start, the 36. That's Julius Jones working in the middle. For a couple, Julius Jones missed a few games in the middle of the season, but he had his breakout game a year ago on Thanksgiving Day against the Bears. His brother, Thomas, was the opponent that day, Chicago. He rushed for 150 yards in that game. Third single best performance Thanksgiving history. We'll see shared time, though, in the backfield with Marion Barber, an outstanding rookie from Minnesota. A little quick movement, no flag. Out of the backfield, out to the 40, that's all. So give him three, third and five coming. You know, Jim, you look at this game, and I find it interesting. Uh, Bonnie Bernstein talked about it before. Bill Parcells, his team was in pads this week. The Denver Broncos, no pads, they had walkthroughs. And you look at how they're built. The Cowboys are big, they want to bully you. The Denver Broncos are smaller, they want to beat you with speed and executing plays. So it's a clash of styles. So yeah, you come his way. going to win this battle. They bring Barber, the running back, at the bottom of your screen, lined up as a receiver on third and five. And meanwhile, they hit the slant for the first with Witten, his third catch. This is what Drew Bledsoe's got to do today. The Denver Broncos like to come up here. Look at the bluff by the linebacker, Al Wilson, and he gets caught inside. Drew Bledsoe sees it. Goes to the outside receiver and puts it right on the money. It takes a big quarterback who is strong, who can stand in there with people around him to throw those type of routes inside, and that's what suits, suits Drew Bledsoe the best. That one picked up 12, longest play of the game. Our initial first down, we saw Whitten taking a breather. Dan Campbell takes his place in the lineup. Over to Glenn. Bailey says, hold on a minute. I've got this side of the field, and he brings him down quickly, but give him five yards. Champ Bailey is back. Now, I don't want to jinx him for today, but when you look at him in the past few games and compared to what you saw early in the year, he is running full speed. And when the football's in the air, if you throw it deep down the field, he is going to outrun your wide receiver to the ball. And that's even Mike Shanahan said it last night. He knows it that he's healthy and that hamstring is feeling good just because right. how he's, he is reacting to the deep ball. Second down and five. And as Jones tripped up, what a fine play in the backfield made by Courtney Brown. He sets him back two yards. Courtney Brown, this so-called transplanted Cleveland Brown defensive line. Courtney Brown is the one that could really turn it up and do great. That time he gets in the backfield. That's what Denver's defense is about. Penetration, being fast, making moves, and not sitting in there trying to take on the blockers. Well, that Denver defense, second in the league against the rush. There's a good reason why. That front line, including the addition of Brown. Second down, make that third down and seven. And Barber said, yeah. I'm sorry, Jimmy just killed the play, so he's changing it. I heard him yell kill. And he almost got killed. It is gold. Stepped in front, but there is a flag.
holding, 24 defense, five yards, automatic first down. Now you can see Champ Bailey irritated right away, being called for that one. Yeah. I think Champ Bailey, just by his body language, thinks he hit the receiver inside the five yard limit. Let's watch him down here at the bottom of your screen. Hits it. Stays on it and a tough call. Tough call against Champ Bailey. First down Dallas from the 40. Again, working the short passes. There's Bailey. Bailey with no one near him. Touchdown, Denver. Two things. Drew Bledsoe overthrew the receiver. He misjudged. The tight end going out in the flat. Champ Bailey's quick reaction, getting off the wide receiver, and then most of all, what a catch. Look to the right. What? What a qu really quick, excellent reaction by Champ Bailey. That was not even a defense where he's supposed to be up there close. He saw the quick drop by the quarterback. He saw him release it. He reacted, and he was rewarded. You just said what? Maybe two plays ago, you don't mean to jinx him, but he's all the way back. Well, so much for that. Man, you uh, knew what you were talking about as Bailey takes it 65 yards with his career best sixth pick. And the Cowboys come right back onto the field. And Bledsoe with the give to Jones. And he is twisted down after a yard. Champ Bailey is an early candidate for the All Iron, the Phil Sims All Iron Award, which is just now arriving here at Texas Stadium. Jim, you can't pronounce a winner of a golf tournament after the first hole. I, just a candidate. Uh, okay. Have to put him in there as a nominee. Well, it was a big play made in his reaction and the catch. They were delivering, by the way, your All Iron Trophy. Yes, I know. Bledsoe has an open man and the double whammy put on Witten by John Lynch as well as Nick Ferguson at gain 14 but there is a flag. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 56, hit the quarterback in the chest with his helmet. 15 yards, first down. Now Wilson's penalty will move the ball to the Denver side of the field. Al Wilson, number 56 on the blitz. Gets around the running back Julius Jones and hits him with his helmet. He leads with it. You cannot do that. But go back to that play. Look, think about what you just saw. So many times you hear about Drew Bledsoe can't do this. That, hey, what he can do, he's big. He can stand in there and make that throw where a lot of guys couldn't do it. Gerald Austin is. Governing this crew today, and now with time, it's dumped across the middle to Jones, and he's able to work it down to the 35. Saturday, NFL Films takes a special look at the commissioner who helped shape a game, an industry, and the culture. It's Roselle building America's game on the CBS Sports special Saturday at 2 Eastern. And by the way, may I add, not only happy Thanksgiving out there, Commissioner Tagliabue, but happy birthday to you today. Second down for the Cowboys, second and four. They've got an open man, and he is out at the 30. That was Copper. When you blitz a quarterback, it's all about timing. That's what it is. Surprise, and look at John Lynch and Al Wilson both coming. They timed it up perfectly with Drew Bledsoe's snap count. So as a quarterback, you've got to be alert for that situation and start changing up, make them show the defense, and maybe get them off sides. It's the first catch of the season for Terrence Copper, and it gives the Cowboys the first at the 30. Day exploited by Julius Jones. Al Wilson got a hold of him after eight yards. Well, you've heard it so many times over the years. Larry Allen, number 73, the left guard, seals it to the inside. 
Oh, what a job by Al Johnson. The center comes behind Larry Johnson and makes a good play. Actually, he got away from Wilson and was finished off by Gold. And this time, several Denver players are in on this hit. No gain. There was a, another uh, injury on the special teams a moment ago. Keith Burns shaken up for the second time in the game on the Denver side. And it's an ankle sprain. They're saying questionable if he'll return. Well, do you see Bill Parcells making faces about the play call that Sean Payton, the offensive coordinator, was sending in? You recognize that look. Oh, yeah. From third and short, there's a Cowboy first down. Yeah, it's looking pretty good now, though. Fearless Price. Well, what a job. That's a, a quick, decisive, and strong throw by Drew Bledsoe. Coming back after that big interception that he threw, if you're a young quarterback, hard to get back into the rhythm of the game because you don't want to make that mistake. But Bledsoe has been in a lot of tough spots, so he's used to it, and he comes out of it quickly. And in the red zone, 41 out of 35 times they've scored this season. And it's Marion Barber. He has been dangerous on red zone carries the last three weeks. The rookie with five touchdowns over the last three games. Well, that time he was brought down from behind by D.J. Williams. That's the second time today when the play has gone away from him. He has made the tackle. Second down nine. And Denver really shifted players in and out. Champ Bailey has come out for a few plays. I guess when they know or they think it's going to be a running play, they're taking him out and they bring him back in when they expect pass. He's back in there in the secondary at the top. Second down and nine. Bledsoe locks it, and wide open. Touchdown, Dallas. Deshaun Johnson. That is a direct result of the interception. Champ Bailey read the interception really fast, so they had this play in anyway, so what a good time to call it. Fake the screen to the outside. Watch his reaction. Uh-oh, it's too late. Keyshawn Johnson vacates the spot where Champ Bailey should have been. Or he goes to the spot that Champ Bailey should have been in. And a nice souvenir, wonderful gesture by Keyshawn after that touchdown. Good play call. Bledsoe five for five on the drive to five different receivers after giving up one. It's a kick to Rock Alexander. If it makes it all the way back, to the deep man, it does. And the rock is written down at the 16. Keith Davis. I don't know, Phil, just to give you a little update here. You, so you <laughs> yeah. keeping you away from it. Right down from your hometown, right? Fort Knox? Fort Knox, Kentucky, near where I grew up in Louisville, Kentucky. Thank you, Anderson. Picks up about four. How about the Irving Police Department? They've got the full. Really off to a good start for both teams. Some valuable goods that will be presented after the game. And second down and six. Denver goes empty. Plummer has a first down out across the 30 to Kyle Johnson. Had hardly even seen the Broncos offense, it seems, to this point. Well, they don't like to just drop back and throw the football a lot. But Jake Plummer's done such a much better job this year. How about that? Just sling at sidearm and finds the receiver down the field. Johnson, the fullback, split all the way to the outside. And I'll tell you what this Dallas defense thinks about this passing game. They are bumping and running and challenging them to throw the football. Hey, Phil, Ron Dane is in the backfield for the first time for Denver. On first and ten, he's going to get the uh, second team duties today with Tatum Bell out, and Plummer could have run with it, but the man is wide open, and he hits him. That's Putzier at the Cowboy, 43. And they call Putzier Cowboy, and he gains 24 before he's lassoed Dallas territory. Well, that catch comes from Jake Plummer, who is under heavy pressure, and it's a zone that time. You know it's a zone when you don't see a defender chasing a receiver when he goes down the field. But when a quarterback scrambles.
zone defense just get bigger because guys look at the quarterback and they start moving out of the spots they should be in. On the toss, here's Dane, wide open. Down to the 29 and a first. Well, you know, Tatum Bell is the home run hitter. He's out of today's game. But when we talked to Mike Shanahan last night, didn't he have that little smile on his face? He goes, Don't you worry, we'll be okay with Ron Dane. And he knows this game is built for runners like Dane, who are tough, can break tackles, comes from the New York Giants. He fits in perfectly with this running game and running style of the Denver Broncos. Now the Giants gave up on him, but like you've been saying to us the last few days, this is the perfect fit for Dane, this system. Played a lot in the preseason and the first couple of games. And he remains in here. Final minute of the quarter. Plummer to the end zone. And into double coverage. Lalee was the target. There is a flag down. A line of scrimmage. Illegal contact. 26 of the defense. Five yards. Automatic first down. Well, that will... Move Denver down the field inside the 30 and the NFL today the backfield week two in the win against San Diego. They rode him down the field to a winning field goal. Here he tried to bounce off a pile but nowhere for the feet to operate and it's just a couple for Dane this time. Now you know a lot of people say oh come on Ron Dane he's such a bust and all this and yes his years in New York did not go well but why Mike Shanahan picked him up one he just loves to pick up running backs and make it work. But he went back to look at his college films and he goes they block the run the same way that we do. It'll work here. He's in better shape thinned out and that's why it's working well in limited action so far this year. Well Denver's going to let the first quarter expire. Second down here and eight to go. With Mike Anderson coming in on the quarter change and picked up just a couple. Well, just, just to kind of go back over. That's what they expect the running game to look like. A lot of two and three yard runs and just to keep the passing situations simpler and easier, of course, for Jake Plummer. Mike Shanahan talking to us last night about how the Cowboys try to control the tempo of a game. Well, these two teams first and second in the league in time of possession. Denver one, Dallas two. Third and six. Up to the end zone to Rock Smith. Touchdown, Denver. I'll tell you, that is, they must have been expecting this blitz. You saw Mike Shanahan on the sideline just <laughs> going a little crazy because they came with every player on the defense except two wide guys. Look at all the blitzers coming. Nobody in the middle of the field, and Jake Plummer hangs in there as Rod Smith fakes a short route, then goes deep. And gets right by Aaron Glenn. And what a throw by Jake Plummer. Well, they had a similar play for a touchdown at Oakland in the game a couple of weeks ago. 20 yard hookup. Well, Jake Plummer told us about Rod Smith. He's the man out there. Very unselfish, epitomizing what this team is all about. Saying the coaches, that's why you want to keep me. Determined. Good to have on your team. Jason Thompson brought down at the 21. He also happened to say, Phil, that he would play the game whether they were playing, paying me or not. Let's go back and look, Jim, at this touchdown. Here's Rod Smith. Watch the move and then up the field. Look at all the defenders here. And Mike Shanahan was expecting this call. Otherwise, why would you have two backs in the backfield? And did you see how soon Jake Plummer threw the football way before Rod Smith was even looking for it. Well Aaron Glenn was out there one on one. Well it was a blitz. Aaron Glenn expected the football to be thrown quick and when it's not that's really not the corner's fault. Marion Barber begins this series in the backfield. And Bledsoe. And the middle of the field appears to be there when he wants it as Witten now has four catches in the half. What have you seen out of Bledsoe? Well, I've seen some uh, pretty good throws by Drew Bledsoe. This one he just misjudged. Terrific interception. But then he comes right back with five completions. Takes him right down the field. 
and took advantage of Champ Bailey, who was reading the offense just a little too quick. I'm sure that's five grabs for Witten. And it's second down and three. Up the middle, it's Barber. And some nifty moves for a first. Let's go back down to Bonnie. Well, Jim, this is Drew Bledsoe's second tour of duty with Bill Parcells. Parcells coached the first four years of Bledsoe's career up in New England, but we got a little taste of how different their relationship is during our meetings this week with the Cowboys. We were talking to Drew. Parcells peeked his head in, and he said, hey, when you're done, go talk to Sean Payton, the offensive coordinator. Tell him what plays you want in the scripts. Tell him what you're not comfortable with. And when Parcells left, Drew said, there's one difference. When I was 23 in New England, he said, these are the plays you're running, and you're going to like them. <laughs> That's right. He had a good smile on his face when he said it. I think he's enjoying his time with Bill Parcells now. Not going to enjoy this one as he is hammered on the release incomplete. Bailey and Williams, the two corners, colliding well, with the quarterback. Jim, it looks like it's Drew Bledsoe's talking to Terry Glenn. Like he wants to throw it now, and he's not ready for the football. So he has to pull it down, and Darren Williams on a corner blitz. Man, that's how you... That's how you just blow your arm out. Many quarterbacks get hit like that, and they're out for the season. Clearly, the, the hand was moving forward, but just a fraction late for Bailey from forcing a fumble. Denver loves to blitz their corners, and here it comes again. That time it was, no, it was uh, Williams again coming in, blitzing for the second straight play. You would think a little quarterback would not be a good blitzer, but why he, he is, he's so fast. He gets there before you can even get the football in your hand and get rid of it. And Darren Williams, back-to-back -back plays coming on the blitz. It'll work, especially when you have someone covering for you, like Nick Ferguson stepping over on that one. This defense of Denver, Larry Coyer, the defensive coordinator, they blitz. And here's another look. Are they coming or not? You try to guess. I'd say yes. And I was wrong. They were faking it. But look what it caused. Ball start, 79 offense, five yards. It's still third down. So it'll back up Dallas five yards. Hey, tomorrow, the SEC on CBS. So they will rock my all-time favorites. Vernon Lundquist, Florida, Florida State, on CBS on Saturday. A Texas home of conducted just a month ago. Texas sports had a plan. Now, what's up? Down the field, and he's picked for the second time. It's Nick Ferguson. Ferguson with the run back to the Dallas end, to the 36. Denver faked the blitz. They fake it. Drew Bledsoe changed the play to throw it deep down the field. They drop back, and that's what calls the interception. There is a flag, but Jerry Austin picking it's, it up. Yeah, it's holding on the offense. And that's what it is. It's a guessing game with this defense, and Dallas gets wrong that play. With the blitz because he's going to know wants to know if they really caught it. They're faking the blitz. Bledsoe changes the play. Now he's got receivers going deep down the field. At the intercept. What a catch. Well, they're going to question the fact that he was touched down after the yes. pick. Okay, he was not touched. Look at Terry Glenn going deep down the middle. Oh, well, let's, oh, that's uh, uh, that's gonna, that's going to that him. is going to be reversed. You have to think. I'm open. Of passes, pass attempts without an interception. Going eight games plus without firing one. Come out empty, moving Anderson to the top of the screen as a receiver. And the safe pass to Rod Smith, who splits the defenders and gets right on the first down line. Well, this is updated with that last attempt. He's moved past Bart Starr. Most consecutive passes in a single season without an interception. And really, he could by days in. He could move into third past Brooks and DeBerg and O'Donnell's already moved past Starr. Yeah, and you know, even the Cowboys talked about it. The Broncos manage the game. They know how to protect their quarterback. And Jake Plummer 
is doing a terrific job. Mike Anderson, he got behind a whole wave and then stepped out to pick up three. And you know, Jake Plummer, what did he say to us last night? Yeah, no, I'm not making throwing interceptions. He didn't sound that excited about it, did he? No, he said, I'm a game manager yeah. now, I'm more than a quarterback. You know, before I was making plays, yeah, but Jake, you were losing and you were throwing a lot of interceptions and people didn't like you as much as they like you right now. But he goes, yeah, I know, I know, yeah, yeah, it's like we're winning. <laughs> so, in his blood, he wants to take chances. He's competitive. He wants every play to work. Sometimes that can work against you. Like down seven. That was just outside the reach of Rod Smith. Well, Mike Shanahan said that he had a talk with Jake at the beginning of the year and said, you don't have to make a play every time. It's my job to get you a defense. So if you have any question, just throw it away. Yeah. And he, when he, and he also said, when Mike Shanahan left the San Francisco 49ers, they came back and had John Elway as his quarterback, he said, I had to have the same speech with John Elway. John, every play is not the end of the world. Throw it away. And it worked for John Elway, and it's worked for Jake Plummer so far this year. Third down and seven. You see Plummer throwing again if he avoids the pressure. Now he'll get bounced out with aggression. And Plummer's saying, you know, I was already out. He might have been. And Terrence Newman trying to make his case. I tell you, certain quarterbacks in this league, if this happened to, it's, that flag would have been out of their pockets before he could have got to the sideline. And it's legal. He's in the air. He's inside. That's a good job. Terrence Newman, good judgment. And always hit the quarterback if you get a chance. Well, that was part of that competitiveness you spoke of about Plummer. He got right back into the face of the defender. Plummer got bounced up, and so did the side judge. But the Broncos will now punt. Sauerbrunn. Major hang time. And needing some help. And gets it if they don't met. Oh, look at the Broncos. It rattled around like a pinball off of three players. And goes into the end zone for the touchback. I could because I was still trying to decide. I was going back and forth. And so now they haven't spotted the football, but it really appeared as though the football needs to be. Well, they're moving it all the way out to the three. What's the reason for that's that? Because that's where they originally touched it, Jim. That's where it goes to. It's not where they stop the football. It's where you originally touch it. They get to put it there because they stopped it from going in the end zone. Cowboys first down and play action. Bledsoe must be careful as he's tackled for a loss and was ruled down. What a play by Darren Williams. A ball popped out, but Bledsoe already down. Well, Darren Williams, once again, we've said his name about five times today, making plays on the blitz, and this time nobody open. Darren Williams doesn't go for the fake. He covers the tight end. Carl Pema. Big play on the goal line to stop the football from go, uh, going for a touchback. These are all draft picks by the Denver Broncos, and they're both rookies. Second down, 12. And Marion Barber holding on to that with two hands. He's had a little bit of an issue with the fumbles, including late in that Philadelphia game that the Cowboys were lucky to recover to hold on for that comeback win. But he has given them quite a boost, too. Uh, look at it from up above. Look at the defensive line, how fast they move. Good job of pursuit that time. Marco Coleman, a defensive lineman, along with Ian Gold, kind of make the play. Marco Coleman, been inactive for a lot this year. Gets active last week, gets a sack, and already in a couple plays today. Third and 11. They're showing blitz. And they are. Here they come. Quick unload to Keyshawn. He had to reach back. And lost his footing. Down by Darren Williams, and the Cowboys will punt out of the end zone. They put so much pressure on you, this Denver defense. And right now, they're blitzing. It's working. Look at, the, look at Drew Bledsoe's left. There comes John Lynch, untouched. Drew Bledsoe has to get rid of the football quickly. 
And Darren Williams this time will step back to try to return this from Mac. Matt McBriar. He must get rid of it quickly. And barely does. Gets the hang time, gets the job done. Spotted at the Denver Pits. Putting a lot of pressure on the Cowboys' offense. Ron Dane returns to the backfield. Had a lot of spring in the couple of carries we saw. Look at Plummer going down deep, and now the interception streak is over as Terrence Newman makes the theft. Newman steps out at the 31. Well, they're going for the big play, and Mike Shanahan is telling Jake Plummer, I'm pretty sure the underneath receiver is wide open. Rod Smith is going here. All Jake Plummer is is reading this defender. If he goes back, throw it to that receiver on the outside, and he's running backwards. And he still throws it out there, and it's picked off. And as you look at it, neither receiver is open. Rod Smith is the short receiver. The linebacker is underneath him. That's one you'd like to throw away. Well, the Cowboys really had that covered both ways. And 229 straight. Without a pick, and that comes to an end. On 230. Now the Cowboys. Bledsoe stepping up, and he's launching it. Terry Glenn. At the Denver 30. I ask you this, Jim. Was that any good? That was a terrific throw. And again, yes, he can't move around, but what he can do, he gets no credit for plays that he makes down the field. Look how long it takes Terry Glenn to get down there to make the catch. The Broncos were not fooled, but the short receiver underneath. Drew the defense up, and Drew Bledsoe threw about a 45 to 50 yard rocket across the field for a big completion. Really did on a rope. And Bledsoe goes over to Julius Jones, who holds on, although John Lynch made it uh, rather painful. No gain. Now you saw Glenn, 18 yards per catch, picks up 39 on that one. And Bledsoe's been able to go deep a number of times this year, far more than what Dallas was able to do last year well he's buying himself they're doing play action passes they move him around just enough and when you do those things with the quarterback it allows receivers a second chance to get down the field and then that's what Terry Glenn's role is to make the moves and get deep second down and ten and Julius Jones gets three off the juke and gain seven maybe eight Larry Allen Helped yep. him once he able to escape the line of scrimmage. Julius Jones, watch him how quick he is. Right, just shifting his feet back and forth. Finds the open hole and gets down before the defense can clobber you. But that's a nice job of just feeling the open space. Jones with the good run, but he heads back to the sideline. Barber in. Third and two for Dallas. They're asking Rookie to get the tough two, and he's coming up short. And just barely. Well, Jim, that was a good second effort. I don't know if he's short. Saw the linesman on the far side come in. Looked like he, well, no, you're right. Boy, Denver might want to say, hold on a minute. It's too late now. There was a good second effort, though, by Marion Barber. I think that's what happened. You were up here in his second effort. There were so many bodies around it. We lost sight of the runner and he gets in there and gets the first down. They believe that this kid Marion Barber the third his father a former NFL running back as well with San Diego and others. They think he's becoming a very good goal line short yardage back and we saw it there. And uh, well there's a challenge flag out oh, five and a half to go in the first half. Looks left, throws left. Keyshawn makes the grab. And he's down at the 14. Give him six. What a play by Drew Bledsoe and Keyshawn Johnson. A lot of people. Marion Barber with the blitz pickup. John Lynch. Well, there's a reason why he's been in the league a long time. He knows how to time it up. Look at this. 
Drew Bledsoe's already committed to the play. He comes through there, and Marion Barber takes him right down to the ground. One of the reasons why Marion Barber's getting playing time tremendous when it comes to blocking defensive backs. Cowboys cannot say enough about how the rookie knows how to pass protect. Gets rewarded with a carry and bounces around for another first down. Think about this drive. How did it start? It started with an interception. Everything going Denver's way. And then Jake Plummer's interception gave this Cowboy team some life. Five plays to this point after the Newman pick. Covering 54 yards, the big one. 39 yards to Terry Glenn. And it's a first and goal to go for Dallas. It low, doesn't he? Gets it all the way down near the five. That's a really good description of what it was. In there, he has found the end zone five times in the last three games. Oh, Another chance here, and what a hit and a fumble on the back end of it. They're ruining him down. What a wallop at the one. That was some hit. You're going to fumble the football. I don't care who you are. Nick Ferguson, 25 from the side, just Ooh. catches him solid and hits the ball, too. And Barber was coming in there holding on with two hands. But third and goal at the one. Cowboys trying to tie it. Play action, Bledsoe rolling out in trouble, and no one in the area. Uh, it was sloppy right from the start, and Drew Bledsoe made a good decision not throwing this football. I don't know what number it is. There's the defender. Oh, it's John Lynch. He's got him, he's baiting to throw it. Well, that was Ebenezer Ekubon who chased him out. Ari, in the back of your mind, you already committed to going forward on fourth down. Well, there's what you got. It's a good solid yard. It's actually farther out than I thought. I thought it was about a half a yard. Cowboys get this crowd energized. They're going to leave it. What do you do? Do you throw it or you do a little counter run, like fake a run to the right? And try to catch them, just slow the defense in, defense down just enough where you can run them with power to the other side. I think they'll go with Barber. He's been the hot back in these situations lately. Power on power, will that be it? The, the different jump going up top. What a grab by Keyshawn, and it looked like he was pushed out. There is a flag, I think Denver jumped. Ruling on the field was a Keyshawn caught it out. Offside, 61 defense. Half the distance to the goal. Let's get for a It's offsides by the Denver Broncos. Gerard Warren inside. There it goes. Jim, what did I say during the commercial? I think this Bronco defense, they must have a key because they're getting off the football so well. Nice one-handed grab by Keyshawn Johnson. Oh. Can't get his feet down, of course. That was a beauty. But did not result in anything. Just a half a yard closer this time. Big break for the Cowboys that time. Snake it over the top and in is Bledsoe. That was a good drive for the Dallas Cowboys. Just keeps their confidence high. And it, I just go back to the drive. It's that big throw for, by Drew Bledsoe across the field to Terry Glenn. And a quick snap count catches Denver off guard just enough to allow Bledsoe to go over the top. Bledsoe with that good size. 6-5 and just going right over the top. Made it look easy. Pundit ties it at 14. So Bledsoe. Took it too easy on him. That has 
not change with Bill Parcells. Has come to picked up on the second half by Alexander. Oh, and the hit right back. You like the one by Ferguson earlier? Well, this time it was Willie Pyle. Didn't like that. No, I just fell down and hoped he tripped over. Of course, you never threw any picks, so you never would have had the occasion. Sure. Flags everywhere. Ball start. 65 up. The 1970 merger to average less than one giveaway again, though they have given one to the Cowboys here. That's Mike Anderson. And he is ramrodded by Roy Williams. So a little hurry up look for Denver. Two and a half to play in the half. Anderson contained to this point. Three yards a carry. With another attempt and another fine tackle by DeMarcus Ware. Last two plays, you're seeing two players that are going to be the cornerstones of this defense. Roy Williams and this year's first round draft pick in DeMarcus Ware. You know, that'll bring it down to the two minute Thanksgiving Day dinner. We have three shifts working on it. Not too many cooks in the kitchen, I guess. Third and eight. And Plummer trying to duck beneath the pressure, still taken down. Chris Canty, the rookie. Jake Plummer looking down the field, has plenty of time, but there is nobody open as he looks to the left side. The tight end puts here, he is covered. Jake Plummer does a smart thing, hold on to the football and go ahead and take the sack. Well, the Cowboys all the time out. They, That's what it's about. That's why they're, they're, they're down. Right. They've had the best the first half of games all season long. And it's Newman getting past the first tackle and a flag is going to bring this back. As he made a number of shifty moves to get out to the 45. 44 yard punt. And the Cowboys are going to go back. Huge penalty. Yep. Inside of the 30 it appears. Changes everything how you view this drive. Illegal block from behind, number 20 during the run back, 10 yards. Thankful for to have uh, Pat Summerall and Bert Lundquist be able to have Thanksgiving dinner with the two of them. Most grateful for that, as well as you and Lanny Watkins. And yeah, the Cowboys done. pick up a yard with Julius. Thinking completely, probably a play action pass trying to get this drive going. Penalty cost them 24 yards. Broncos earned a timeout. Dallas trying to get it up the field with Polite. And a flag thrown in on the back of this. Dallas will perhaps get a lot of it back off the return penalty. Tripping, number 52 of the defense. 10 yards, first down. That is a huge penalty against Denver. Now it will stop the clock, and it moves them up the field. And Drew Bledsoe, don't take the chance. Oh, yes, Blayton. Ian Gold gets a little fooled by Polite. That's the one I'm still looking for in that Oakland, Kansas City tape. Team that came down to the wire with the Chiefs winning on the game's final play. A controversial call that worked against the Raiders, surprisingly. Huh? And first down for Dallas from the 40. Cross him up. That's Julius Jones for only four yards. Yeah, still plenty of time. And, you know, the goal here is not to rush it and just to get in position to hope you get a field goal try. So the Cowboys expected much more out of that. They hurry up to the line. And Keyshawn unable to hold on. Boy, those short passes. If I was the Dallas Cowboys, I'd be careful because this Denver defense. He joined the team last week. And. Booted a 56 yarder against the Lions here at Texas Stadium. Again, they go with the draw. And Jones has the first. They ran the perfect play. A blitz by the Denver Broncos from the left. Everybody looking for the pass. They forget to look for the runner. And the spike will always second down and 10. Look. Flags are down. Bledsoe tries the sideline, actually throws it out. There it is again. It's offsides by the Broncos, but they are anticipating. Offside. 
91 defense, five yards. It's still second down. Who's uh, new in this position, but Petiti with great promise and a lot of fans. Here in and that's the fifth penalty. Late game, offense. Fires it away as the defender gave up on covering Julius Jones and moved up on Bledsoe. It's Ten yards, still second down. And Al Johnson, the center on that one. Uh, you know, would he retire? How much longer will he coach? And Bledsoe telling us, he said to the coach at one point, you can't retire. What are you going to do? You know, I've watched you go in there and just bust on people all the time in the weight room during the off. Wouldn't go over too well in the real world, trust me. Love the needle. Set up a little screen. And this one going to back him up even more. Yeah, now the Cowboys, they'll just go, okay, let's just get into halftime and it's a, it's a draw here at the these last couple drives. He's going to throw. I know what Bill Parcells just said. He wants to throw it deep down the field one more time. Why not? Maybe get a little pass interference call. Get a chance to bring out the kicking team. Bledsoe will give it a heave. If he's given the time. And more flags. Holding 79 on the offense. Last play of the half. The half is over. As these two teams, both division leaders, battle it out here in a critical game on each side. This is Thompson. Thompson written down by Kyle Johnson. As for the fantasy numbers, and a touchdown. Julius Jones will see the first action in the Dallas backfield for the second half. Off the right side and met immediately by Courtney Brown. And let's get the uh, report from the locker rooms. Uh, what, what did you hear down there, Bonnie? Well, Jim, in talking to Bill Parcells, regardless of the score, he was very pleased with his offense's ability to sustain drives. 44 plays for the Cowboys offense, 21 for Denver. Want to continue on this in the second half. A note Jake Plummer passed along that's worth keeping an eye on. He said, we must have some of the worst production in the third quarter throughout the league. Not a big problem a lot because they've been playing with a lead, but something that Dallas could take advantage of it. They could keep the momentum going early on here. All right, Bonnie. Yes, most of the season, Denver's been going into that third quarter with a sizable lead. Bledsoe dumps it to Witten. Shakes off one and forces the second tackle to be hard-earned by Foxworth. He finally got uh, brought down by Foxworth, but Gold let him get away. Here comes the blitz. They cannot pick it up. Drew Bledsoe stands in there, and when the team blitzes a quarterback, and you can't block it. The receivers have to know that, and they change the routes. And that's what Jason Witten did. Drew Bledsoe put it right on the money. Pass distribution by the Cowboys today spread out pretty evenly. It's Jones. And this time able to pick up a few yards. Give him four, actually. Said uh, out of character, the plumber in the first 10 games, three interceptions, but really none after the third game until today. Rushing numbers way down for the Broncos, and the Cowboys really not running the football with any great effectiveness either. And the Cowboys have not given up any more than 14 in a home game. And Denver already at that number as we start the third quarter. Play action and the rush. And Bledsoe knocked down as he threw it away at the feet of Ian Gold. Brown and Price dragged down Bledsoe. Yeah, you said it. Just the whole defensive line of the Denver Broncos gets back there. Courtney Brown really just getting Petiti the right tackle, number 70, 79. He's retreating too much. And when you retreat, 
you're going to be in the face of your quarterback, and Drew Bledsoe does a good job just throwing it away. Well, we talked about that big rookie right tackle out of Pittsburgh, and Bill Parcells quick to point out how much Marco Rivera, the right guard, has helped Petiti get adjusted to the NFL and life on the line of scrimmage. A little dump pass to Barber and the Broncos with a very strong defensive stand. Champ Bailey coming up and a loss of two. Well, what they got, it's really a screen. They're going to try to block the man that's covering the receiver. And Al Johnson, the center, tries to get out here. Oh, my gosh, and he got held. And now here he comes. He got held by a defensive lineman. That's why he was late. Cowboys will bring out McBriar, averaging over 52 for punt in that first half. This one signal for the fair catch. Fielded at the nine by Darren Thanksgiving at your side as well. Goes down at the 10. That's more believable. Ever Price, we understand, with a uh, knee sprain, questionable to return from that Denver bench as Mike Anderson gains a couple. First half possessions, what do you see here? Well, just gotten a turnover themselves, and the Cowboys took advantage of it and regained that momentum right away. Now with a second running play and a good dash, but a flag looks like it might bring it back as Anderson had enough of the period for the first. Number 50 of the offense, half the distance to the goal, repeat second down. Looks a 3 4 defense before, so what a transition he has made. And of course, he was taught a lot by Bill Parcells and other people who have run it. But this team, it's tough to get big plays, tough to move the quarterback because of those outside linebackers. It makes it second down, 13 off the penalty. They fake to Dane, fire to Rod Smith. And the rookie was chasing him out. DeMarcus Ware, Aaron Glenn finished it off. Short gain, that's all. And you know, you talk about it, Mike Shanahan was a little concerned. He knew he was going to have a, have a hard time running the football and getting big runs, which they usually do. But more importantly, worried about getting some big pass plays because, look, we all know you need those big plays to get some scores in the NFL. Time of possession. Just remember Denver against the Jets four days ago had the football for 43 minutes. Top be, performance in the league this season by one team. That's right. And they're not tired from that performance, so don't think that. Open. Puts here. First down and a plenty as Roy Williams rides him down. 20 yards. You know, this is one thing. On that tackle, people at home are saying, wait a minute, that's that horse collar thing. They didn't call it. And we actually had a chance to get some clarification on that this week. Well, here, watch as they come across. There is a basically a pick play by the Broncos. And Roy Williams does not pull him backwards into him. And if you don't do that, it is not the horse collar. Every time you see a guy tackled up high, they go, oh, could be the horse collar. Not true. Only if you bring him into you and pull him down. Mike Anderson returns. First down, carry. And he flies forward for three yards. And again, Tatum Bell inactive today, and he's uh, had over 600 yards rushing on the season, and you have to feel a little bad for Tatum. Dallas native. We saw him last night at a whole fistful of tickets that he had purchased for 55 members of his family and friends. They got a whole section here at Dallas and he's just unable to go. They worked them out early. Bruce Sternum and they decided he couldn't play. Pass slant Rod Smith and he tiptoes past some early hits to the 50 for a first down. And the Tatum Bell contingent, uh, they're still here. Enjoying himself. And the orange 26 is Tatum's father, Tony. And Tatum was looking forward to coming back here. He played a number of high school games here. Yeah. You know? Quite a few, but about five of them by his estimation. Jimmy says, never had a good game. Yeah, he played for DeSoto, as you would see Mike Anderson. Actually, went against uh, Tyson Thompson of the Cowboys here on this field. But another day for uh, Tatum Bell, a key part of this uh, Denver ground game that has outrushed the opponent by an average of 90 yards a game. I tell you what they do. They got a nice little drive going here. Good rhythm, mixing in the running pass, 
the big third down pass from Jake Plummer just seemed to give new life to this Denver offense. And what it does, it makes it easier for the play caller. Mike Shanahan gets him in rhythm. Second down and six. Eventually to cross midfield, and now this is when they're dangerous. Flag down. Plummer has the first. And at the 31, Charlie Adams cleared out the right side, but will it come back? I wonder if this is going to be a blocker engaged and then another player goes low on him. Nope. It's on Dallas. There's no foul for defensive holding. So spot it down at the 31 of the Cowboys the 14 yard run by Plummer. You know Jim you talk block. Ron Dane. And picks up four yards. We are nine weeks into the TV season and only one team remains undefeated. You can do that down here in Texas you know it's, it's usually done in good taste. Anderson again getting some heavy work on this drive three yards a third and short third and three coming up talk about this drive the momentum it's given this Denver Broncos team running it look how far it is inside their own 15 seven plays 58 yards and consuming some time too. remember they had third and seven back at their own 13. This time third and three. Open. Puts the air. First down at the 15. That was a great job by Jake Plummer. Standing in the pocket looking for the quick pass. Nobody open and he just quickly dips to the outside and it allows a receiver to uncover and he finds him and puts it on the money. This is what happened. This is the new Jake Plummer. Instead of just trying to force it in there, he moves. And boy, what I really like, he can throw on the run and drop that arm down and sling it in there sideways. Got to be able to do that as a starting quarterback in this league. They're alternating backs almost play to play. It's Dane's time. Gets the call. Look at this run. Dane with the touchdown for Denver. I was in Denver back in the summer. And I watched this guy run down the field right in front of me, and I turned to everybody in the Denver Broncos staff and go, who was that? That's Ron Dane. He just looks different in this uniform. He runs different. How about that cut? Going outside. Makes the defender completely miss, showing the good winner. A new life in Denver and delivering today in Dallas. A 90 Amounting to a total of six in the first half. Kick picked up by Campbell of the Cowboys. And Bledsoe and quarterback somehow throwing it away at the last second. A lot of hurries. Quarterback pressures. Bledsoe comes out looking up top. He's grabbed Jones and upended by Foxworth. Boy, it looks like Drew Bledsoe. They've had some problems down here with the snap between him and Johnson. And it looks like he's either late getting out from underneath the center or the defensive line is a half step faster than Dallas's offensive line. It looks like a lot of work between the quarterback and the center. Al Johnson, the Cowboys starting center, has been a little banged up. Put Whitten in the backfield, lined up as the fullback. And an early collision on Jones. That's Ebenezer Ekuban, a former Cowboy, actually drafted. We saw Price and his family greeting. Price, a former first-round pick of the Broncos in the late 90s. And Ekuban was a Cowboy first-round pick back in 99. Well, you know, you go back to that gym. He went to the Cleveland Browns from here, and along with... Everybody else from that Cleveland Brown defensive line, they ended up in Denver, and it's worked out well for Mike Shanahan and his team. Third down and five. And Dallas gets the first down. 
Diving grab by Peerless Price. That's good thinking by the Dallas Cowboys. Why make it difficult? So few teams throw the football along the sidelines. Look at the space that Peerless Price has. Drew Bledsoe quick with the football and throws it out there with velocity before the defensive back can react. The defense a lot of times will dare you to throw it to the sidelines. Drew Bledsoe not afraid to do that. Quick hit by Courtney Brown this time. They are just getting there almost at the handoff. Well, what it is, they're just quicker than the guys blocking them. The big guys are big, but they cannot get their hands on this quick athletic defensive line. Courtney Brown started slow this year, got injured again in training camp, but just keeps playing better every single week. A defense that... Saw the Jets rush for only 22 yards last Sunday. They had to report that running game early because Denver ended up shutting them out. Led throughout. There's a nice hookup with Terry Glenn for another first. Gain of 12. Dominique Foxworth on the coverage. This time John Lynch and the Blitzers don't time it right. It allows Drew Butzel to stay in there and make the throw down the field. And boy, when you let Drew Bledsoe set his feet, he can put something on it. Gets himself in good position. First down in Denver territory, squeezing through the hole and hammered shortly after that. Three yards for Jones. Monday on CBS, a member of the CSI team gets it to players. They shuffle them in and out every play. Defensive linemen go hard for two, then take a break. Second down and seven. Trying to establish some sort of running attack. And very few openings. Two this time for Jones. Lynch and Gold combine on the tackle. John Lynch, the veteran, plays up near the line of scrimmage a lot. Hard to fool a guy that's seen basically every play there is uh, from an offense in this league. Trevor Price is back in to the Denver defense into the lineup number 93 Marion Barber for the Cowboys in yeah. the backfield here comes the punt rush look at all the guys that's what they call it it looks like it rushing the punter third down this and time. five and Bledsoe get it away in time all over and a sack for the Broncos and it's Trevor Price there's Trevor Price he's getting hot with the sacks now but look at everybody at the line of scrimmage right here. Defender off, defender off, and I was wrong again. Come on, it looks like a blitz. They drop out the last second. It confuses the blocking assignments by the offensive line, and that's why Trevor Price gets the sack. Well designed. It did totally confuse the Cowboys, didn't it? And good coverage. And well done, Keith Davis. But there is the flag. Boy, this is uh, able to hold up. Having the Broncos pinned back at the two. Of course, they did just drive at 90 yards. The last time they had it. Fast moving the touchdown. Illegal block from behind. Number 22 of the receiving team. Half the distance to the goal. First down. On the Texas Stadium from the MetLife Blimp. Captain Jeff Capick. Working hard here on Thanksgiving Day, providing the aerial shots from the one. It's Anderson. And just diving out of the end zone for no game. Cowboys think and run a course in this situation. Change their defense. They've done this a few times today. Happy saying Cheryl Crow at halftime. And a strong performance. Second down and nine to begin the fourth.
Play action. There's the man open. Mike Anderson coughed it up. And was it recovered before he was out? Yes, they rule on the field. It's Newman with his second takeaway of the game. Roy Williams jarred it loose. So if Roy Williams makes the interception last week that wins the game for the Dallas Cowboys. A little different play this time for Denver. Oh, what a hit by Roy Williams. Sure, upstairs, Denver just wanted to make sure the assistance was Newman was the in or not. Oh, and Mike Shanahan does not have a challenge. He does not have a challenge because that was so close. There's nothing he can do. Wow. Boy, and I know he's frustrated right now. He's thinking, what can I do to get a look at this? It doesn't matter. Used him up in the first half. Marion Barber shaking off the ankle tackle. Picks up two. Well, I tell you, Roy Williams, the defensive safety for the Cowboys. He plays up near the line of scrimmage. He plays back. And he's such a ferocious hitter, he causes the fumble. Had they had a challenge. He grabs it before it goes out of bounds. Does he have possession? Pretty close. Oh, I to actually think on that one. Yeah, Mike, you could rest easy. He yeah. probably had it. I think it probably would have been upheld. Ruling on the field, that is. Barber backing into the four. Behind Larry Allen, he ran, but third and goal on the way for Dallas. Reinforcement coming in for the Broncos. They bring back Ekuban and Warren. Really a tough spot. Back of the end zone is usually the safest place. It's the unguarded part of the football field. You need to deceive the defense in situations like this. They got the height edge with Keyshawn on Foxworth, but timeout the best. A big third and goal here for the Cowboys. Pass play all the way to the end zone. Touchdown. It's Jason Witten. That was clever. They had three receivers to the right. I just knew it was going to the right side. What they did, they had Terry Glenn clear it out, and then Jason Witten comes in behind him, and just enough room where Drew Bledsoe can just get it in there before the defense can react. Well, the Cowboys have specialized in close games this year. Down to the wire, and they're in store for another one today. With the tying point after. 21's on the board. Tough. Walking around with the name McQueen. He is. That's Alexander from the goal line. A lot of bodies around them at the 24. What did you see on the touchdown? Here's what happens. Terry Glenn is going to flash in front of Nick Ferguson, and that's just enough to allow Jason Witten to find a little spot. Oh, distracted him just for the a split second. And that's all you need for a short pass in the end zone. Bill Parcells called Witten. Everybody's All-America blonde-haired farm boy tied in. That's what he is. That's what he said. Dane returns to the Denver lineup. And Dane. Five yards. I'm starting to wonder. I smell the pecan pie. I don't know if anybody's just been outstanding from start to finish. I hope they have a monitor back there so they can enjoy the game. <laughs> standing there protecting. Yard shy of the first is Dane, but a flag down. I might point out, though. 66 offense, 10 yards, repeat second down. And then tomorrow on CBS, you can see, you know, what belief is that? I didn't grow up a privileged life, so we did some of the work ourselves. Okay. Gotcha. Second down. Plumber, look out. Oh, Holt Newman had open running room. Canty really forced the wild pass. He was in on Plumber. 
Chris Canty does come almost well. He comes untouched. Denver blows the blocking assignments up front. And I said early in this game, the difference in this Cowboy team is they go after the football. They can blitz because now they have defensive backs who can cover wide receivers. Terrence Newman, first round pick. He can make big plays on the defensive side. He could see iron had he made that theft and a run back. Third down 15. And more pressure and never a chance for Plummer. Greg Ellis with a bear hug. And Canty, a very active game as well. The rookie from Virginia. Yeah, Chris Canty got hurt his senior year. That's why he was a fourth round draft pick. But boy, everybody, Demarcus Ware makes him come up. But nobody is open to give Jake Plummer a chance to get the first down down the field. Didn't matter. He was under too much pressure. Ellis with his eighth sack of the year. There is Newman. Awaiting the sour burn the effort. And there's a buzz in this building for the first time. Ooh, a late fair catch call. And able to fall on it. I mean, he broke into the fair catch call as the ball was coming into his body. And we're back in Dallas with the Cowboys. First down at the 45. The lead in this game never larger than seven. Exchanging touchdowns. And that's Jones. He has to go back deep to get away from the first pressure. And able to move ahead for three. Ekuban with the tackle. Coming up on the subway post. Second down and seven. They go to the three receiver set. Good pass again with open middle. And he's right on that first down yardage. And they move the chains. Passing the football has been tough against this defense. But the short passing game has worked. And it's worked for a couple reasons. One, Al Wilson, you can tell he's a little still. Well, he's definitely not 100%, that's for sure. Might take a couple plays to run that out. He's not going to take himself out. That's a season high eight catches for Whitten. First down, Dallas. They pick up Bailey on the blitz. They launch it long for Glenn. And a little contact, but no flag. Nick Ferguson back deep with Terry Glenn. This Whitten performance, well, he's. He's had chances all game long, including a touchdown. Well, there have not been open receivers down the field. So if the down receive, field receivers are not open, the quarterback is going to look short. Jason Witten is big. He understands how to get open in front of the quarterback, and Drew Bledsoe's finding it. Throwback player. Cowboys today is wanting their throwback uniform. Second down and 10. And John Escapes the hit of gold, and that's the first real running room of the day. So few teams will line up with split backs in the National Football League now and go across the formation. Jones to the right of the quarterback goes across. It was an all-out blitz by the Denver defense. They left the play on because, hey, they knew they could block it down. i tell you what, if D.J. Williams doesn't slow him down, this could have been a huge run. Also, Ian Gold gets up in there and slows him down, too. Hey, there's a challenge flag out, and I thought the same thing that the Dallas bench is saying. The spot, the spot is a yard back of the first. When the runner steps out, the, out of bounds, the ball is at the 39-yard line, which is one yard beyond the line to gain. It'll be first and 10 Dallas at the 39. He means the 34th. Charged with a timeout. And they get one additional replay challenge. So, in effect, the shifting of the ball from his left arm. They're tough to come up with. It's in the fourth quarter. Don't wait for another big spot. Jones today. Give him 11 yards. Quick pass to Keyshawn. Makes the move to get away from Darren Williams. And another Dallas first. Wow, Darren Williams comes up hobbling. 
Might have turned his ankle. Keyshawn Johnson, he's big, knows how to use his body. Nice fake that time and picks up the first down. Pretty shifty for a big man. Faked him right out of his shoes and rolled an ankle. Well, I'll tell you something about what Bill Parcells always tells Keyshawn Johnson once he catches a pass. He's down at 10 and Johnson. Hey, it's over, hey, hey. Well, I was Jimmy in practice Jones. one time. He threw a short pass over the middle to Keyshawn Johnson. Keyshawn catches it. He tries to dodge the defender, and Bill Parcells goes into this big tirade. He goes, Keyshawn. Remember what you are. You are a giraffe. You are not a gazelle. <laughs> so remember what makes you a really good football player. Use your size and don't try to be so quick. But not going to argue with that last move because he was a gazelle. Got around Derrick Williams. Second down and seven. Let's so. Over to Jones. He comes up on him and buries him at the 15. Ian Gold with the big whack on him. Third and five coming up. It was another. We've had a number of huge hits. Everything is tough in this game. Hard to move the football. The passing game, it's tough to get yards. Hard to get a big run. Both defense is making you work hard. Barber in for Jones on third and five. Bledsoe rolling out. Now just fires it away. Remember Al Wilson? Shaking up earlier. Well, he's back going full throttle. Denver's defense continues to confuse the fact that John Lynch comes out to the right, just ruins the whole play. It's a sprint out pass. They want to throw it quick to the right to get the first down. Denver had the perfect defense on, and Drew Bledsoe does the right thing. Throw it away. It'll be a 33-yard field goal try, Billy Cundiff, for the lead. Well, John Lynch has really played well so far today. Romo on the hold. from actually 34 yards. We remained up. Oh, Halfway through the final quarter. All tied. Plummer. Down the middle and the grab by Pitzier. He's going to say, wait a minute, was anybody able to touch me down? Oh, yeah, there's definitely contact. Roy Williams going for the interception. It's a blitz by the Dallas Cowboys. Denver picks it up very well. Jake Plummer, what a throw. Throw it down low, protect your receiver, and also he saw Roy Williams coming up. Good hands by Putz here, gains 15. Dallas with the big defensive lineman in there, expecting run. Run it they do for a couple with Dane. A loss of his dad, a great man, passed away last Saturday night. Across the middle, and the grab made by Dane, and immediately hit by Brady James. And five. Drummer. Flag down. Catch made by Putz here. But it's coming back. Holding number 50 of the offense. 10 yards. Repeat third down. That's been held. Physically, that's when you commit fouls. Third and 15. And hold on a minute. Plummer hesitated at one stretch, thinking they'd whistle the dead. Before the snap, timeout Denver. It will be. He moved to offense though. Jim, a nice way to pay tribute to somebody who's not with him right now. Instead of one, two, three, Bronco, the house. Put the underneath stuff nowhere near first. 
Terrence Newman had a hold of Dane, only gains about half of what they needed. Salgren to punt to Newman. He had a momentary lapse the last time, but cleanly grabs this one. And so, Myers caught Johnson first down. You know, I'll tell you what, I get, I, it does bother me constantly hear what Drew Bledsoe can't do. Who, who in the NFL can make this throw? How fast and how hard did he throw it right on the money? I stood behind him in practice the other day, and I went, first off, you are one big dude. And second, when he has time, not many guys can load up that right leg and throw it like he can. You notice the coverage over there was Darren Williams who turned an ankle, rolled an ankle earlier in this quarter trying to stay with Keyshawn. And Julius for only a yard. Let's go down to Bonnie. Well, Jim, we're watching a pretty gutty performance from Broncos linebacker Al. Well, he came to Denver as a first rounder after their second Super Bowl in a row. And here the play is broken up by Foxworth, the rookie that it's somewhat open in the third round last April's draft. Third down to nine. With three minutes to go. And there is Witten for the first. Bledsoe used his size there to his advantage, didn't he, in the pocket? He did. He used his size and he moved those feet. And Bill Parcells sit there and told me, he says, this guy could just move around. He, he should do it more. And the fact that he stepped up in the pocket, kept his feet alive, it allows Jason Witten, oh, covered, sees the quarterback move, then he uncovers. Good job of making something out of nothing nothing by Jason Witten. Extended his arm up and over the pressure and able to fling it to the first. Back to Johnson. And Derek Williams again unable to hold on. That is a play they call in the huddle. It's a run play and they have a word for it that alerts the receivers. If a guy's too far off of you, I'm going to throw it. You see the running play is to the right. Keyshawn knew it that Hey, this Darren Williams is too far off of me. They take advantage of it. And Al Wilson went over and talked to the rookie. This time they plug the middle. And Julius Hundis. They get another chance. We miss from 34. And we approach the two minute warning. Talked about how the Dallas contingent behind Indianapolis and Dallas sharing the NFC East lead with the Giants. And third and one for the Cowboys with two minutes to play game time. The throw for it and it slips through the hands of Terry Glenn who probably would have been stopped immediately by Darren Williams anyway. Uh, you know I don't think it was again it was a run in a pass and it was just not a good decision. You could tell it's a run. Look at the running backs going to the right. Darren Williams says hey how many times are you going to show that to me. Yeah, the kid would throw that too. Williams is back. And will run away from this one and a favorable but career long for Jason, but he's not 100%. I've got to tell you, he's got a calf injury off his plant foot, plant leg. Were they able to get in position? Here's one attempt to get down there, and it's almost intercepted and broken up by Todd DeVoe. Aaron Glenn actually had the play on it. And Glenn slow to get up. Looks like Todd DeVoe falls on, on top of him. What a job by Aaron Glenn. He waits to the last second and then outruns Todd. On the slant, Smith with Reeves riding him down short of the first. That gained eight, but it'll be a third and two. And look at the pace with which they operate right now. The game tied. You have to be careful about getting too hurry up, getting careless, getting the football back in too much time to the Cowboys. Hey, they're just trying to get to overtime. This is all this is about. It's not about winning the game for the Denver Broncos right here. It's about not losing it. Can you believe Aaron Glenn is back on the field? That's Aaron walking toward 
this near sideline. There he is. And the sideline for the Broncos is going to call the timeout. Well, it allows him to escape wherever he wants instead of rolling him out. Going to try to test Aaron Glenn. Just shaken up and the pass too far for Rod Smith. And Glenn had excellent coverage. Plummer one of the flag. It is the exact same play they scored the touchdown on earlier. And this time Aaron Glenn says, hey, I've seen this. Boy, I tell you what, he almost went for it again, didn't he? But he's quick and fast, and he recovers. Perfect snap. And the boot. To the 30, that's it. Transported down here this week by our Jimmy Hatter. Drove it down here. But we've got a big finish on the way with 44 seconds in regulation. Little sidearm toss, and it cannot end up in the arms of Julius Jones. Brought him back a week ago. One timeout for the Cowboys. Boss over to uh, Terry Glenn, and Champ Bailey wraps on and says, wait, I got him inbounds. And the officials agree. So the clock is running. Well, you know, this is a tough situation even for this Dallas offense. Hard to be real creative and forceful knowing that any type of mistake would cost you the game. So they know about that from their Seattle. Sales must love these tight situations. Did he have gray hair before the game? I think he did. Threw down at 11. Just now. Oh, past the line of scrimmage. And just playing now for an overtime game. It's on the way. Tails heads. We did. So. Hands. Tails. Who's going to make the call? Tails. It's Tails. John Lynch makes the right call. <laughs> Look at the glance over to Al Wilson and his teammates. Coin toss. Just had it. Two teams that had huge playoff expectations, aspirations, with two Hall of Fame coaches going extra time here in Dallas. And that's Williams. And he's out to the 32. Took him a while to get him down. Nathan Jones eventually gets credit for the hit. What's your strategy when you have it first in overtime? You come out and you just go with the same game to stadium. And Playoff victory at Arizona over the Cowboys. They certainly would rank right up with the biggest. He can engineer this one. And the quick pass over to Charlie Adam. Yeah, because it gives the quarterback confidence, and they always have good situations after that. First catch by Adams. No catches today by Lalee. And they run it in an open hole. It's Dane, and he shakes free. Newman's the only cowboy who can stop him. And he rides him down at the six. Keith Davis had a play on him, but Ron Dane broke it. How about Ron Dane again in the hole? Watch his feet. What a nice move. He's patient, cuts it back, and then surprising speed. He's fresh, Jim. You even said it. When you look at him, you can just tell he's a running back that is not worn down from a lot of carries so far this season. Broncos have called timeout, positioned to win it. Well, they're going to waste no time. They're going to come right back out with the kick to win it with Jason Elam. That's right. Go with it now. Don't even go through the semantics of taking handoff because all you got to do is to is be trying to protect the football. So if the snap is not perfect, they're going to tell Jake Plummer fall on it. They'd have four chances. So they'll get a good snap and hold out of these. These plays. Ron Dane on the side. Of how excited he must be. This long run. I got to tell you, when we met with Coach Shanahan and the Broncos last night and yep. indicated there was a strong chance Tatum Bell would not be able to go today, you said to me coming back to the hotel, 
Ron Dane, you watch it. He gets the chance. He will be a star tomorrow. Mike Shanahan had that look in his eye and kind of had a little smirk against us saying, we'll be okay if he has to carry the load for us. 24 yards for the win. Kick by Elam. It is good. Denver wins it. Ron Dane sets up the winning kick. Denver had not had a play of 25 yards all day, and then Dane burst one free for 55 to set up the Elam winner. Tim, what does that say about this Broncos football team, the running back position, the fact that, you know, you get down to the third string guy, and it's Ron Dane, and you, you can tell he can get it done, too, out there, just like the first two guys can. The Broncos go to nine and two on the year. And the Cowboys drop to seven and four. That puts the Giants in the lead alone in the NFC East. Mike Shanahan and John Lynch dancing together. Parcells, he knew his fate. Ron Dane. We've got the Subway postgame show coming up in just a moment. For Phil Sims and Bonnie Bernstein, Jim Nance saying so long from Texas Stadium. We're in overtime. Denver defeats Dallas 24 to 21. What can saving for college teach us about financial decisions? Honey, can we fly this year? Nope. College fund. Hey, guess what? I got a bonus. <laughs> this is great. College fund. Yeah. I got the scholarship. Plan B. Wherever you are financially, we're right there with you. Talk to a Wachovia advisor today. And now, it's time for the Wachovia Uncommon Performance of the Day. In the first quarter of today's Thanksgiving Day matchup between the Denver Broncos and the Dallas Cowboys, the Broncos' champ Bailey picked off Drew Bledsoe and returned the ball 65 yards for a touchdown. It was the longest interception return of Bailey's career. For more Uncommon Performances, log on to CBSSportsLine.com and vote for the Wachovia Uncommon Performance of the Week. This Friday, 5 to 11 a.m. only, get up and get to your Walmart for huge savings on the coolest stuff. Like a Dora or SpongeBob bundle TV and DVD player for only $99.77. Or Faded Glory jeans for the whole family, just $5 to $10 a pair. And a Video Now color for only $25. Get it all bright and early this Friday, 5 to 11 a.m. at Walmart. For the holidays. Home for the holidays. Don't miss. Toyotathon is back. For 27 years, it's been the greatest time to buy the Toyota you're looking for. Quality, selection, value. You'll find it in every vehicle we build. Now at Toyotathon, go for a new Sienna minivan and get up to $2,000 customer cash back. Or lease the new 2006 Highlander for $36 month don't miss the great deals at this huge event the place is your toyota dealer the time is now treat yourself today toyota moving forward what is the color of innocence what is the color of bravado what is the color of passion what is the color of defiance Life is color, and no other HD television shows it more vibrantly than the Panasonic Plasma, America's best-selling plasma TV. Panasonic. Ideas for life. The Subway Post Game Show is sponsored by Subway. It's what to eat when you want to eat fresh. Subway. Eat fresh. Subway. 